Boy, what a day, guys. What a day. I thought my computer busted, and thankfully it didn't. Otherwise, I think I would have crumpled on the floor into a sobbing, sobbing mess. But it's all good. So let's get started with the next review. Hi guys, this is Desiree, and welcome to Unbound Book Reviews. And today I'm going to be reviewing All In by Emma Scott. So I am not entirely sure if all of you have seen my review for Full Tilt, but that was the only review in which I actually cried and... <laughs> Oh, I, I dread looking back at that video. I don't, I don't want to see it. So for those of you who have not read Full Tilt, I am going to warn you right now, this entire review is basically going to be one giant spoiler. This is a duet, Full Tilt and All In are meant to be read sequentially, one after the other. So while if you read the second book, you are going to know what happened to lead up to the second book, but you really really need to go read the first book. Just just fucking do it. It's my favorite book of all time. I have it right there and there it shall stay. It's just, uh, just go do it. So as per usual, we're gonna get started with a non-spoiler section and then with warning, I will move on to a spoiler section. And for those of you who have not read this book yet and do not like spoilers, please stop this video at the end of the non-spoiler section and then come back and revisit the spoiler section when you have read it and we shall discuss. Okay, blurb time and as I'm reading the blurb, it does say spoiler for full tilt. So fair warning for those of you who have not read the first book, the synopsis is even gonna be a spoiler for you guys. Reeling from her loss, Casey Dawson is grieving and heartbroken, her addictive demons hauling her back into the alcohol-soaked abyss she worked so hard to crawl out of. Casey teeters on the edge of oblivion and must find her way through the pain to build a new life for herself with her music and somehow fulfill the promise she made to Jonah, one she feels is impossible to keep. Theo Fletcher has a secret burning in his heart one that he holds close while he struggles to keep strong for his family that is falling apart. His mother's health is fragile and his father's disapproval is breaking him down. Theo is afraid if he follows his heart, he'll fail, and not just himself, but his brother who believed in him when no one else did. Drawn together by their pain, Theo and Casey slowly build a friendship, reforge old ties, help each other to heal, and give one another the courage to reach for their dreams. Together from the depths of grief and guilt, they learn to laugh again, to trust again, and quite possibly find something beautiful and lasting amid the shattered pieces of their broken heart. Please note this novel is not a standalone. It is highly recommended one read full tilt first to get the entire arc of the story and to avoid spoilers. So I was excited to read this book and terrified at the same time because my feelings for full tilt and for Jonah were so fucking powerful that I was kind of afraid that it was going to be overshadowed by Theo by this new book. And I was afraid that Jonah and his legacy and how amazing he was was sort of going to get lost amongst all of it. But, oh my god. <laughs> he's not lost, he's still there. There's just room for one more in this case. And that one more is most definitely Theo or Teddy, as he shall forever be known to me now. I don't see Theo anymore, I see Teddy. Emma is one of my favorite writers. I just really connect with her writing style. I really enjoy the stories that she has. Her stories are never cliche, and she's not afraid to go to a traumatic place with her characters and to really just make an honest story. So you really feel every emotion that you would realistically feel if that situation were actually happening. It's really astounding. She's a very emotionally driven writer and I just very much connect to her. But even in this circumstance, I was really worried because Full Tilt was such a powerful novel and she did something so special and so risky. By having this be a story of a love flourishing between Casey and Theo, Jonah's brother. I was nervous. I'm not gonna lie, I was nervous. But holy shit, it, I, I can't explain it. My heart feels like everything is complete now. It, like, I don't love the first one more than the second one. I don't love the second one more than I love the first one. I love them both. I, I see these two books as one story. As I think over them in my head, I start at full tilt and then it arcs and then I go into all in. It's just totally sequential, totally seamless. I feel like the story is complete. So after full tilt, you're left with this unbearable pain. And I mean heart-wrenching, butt-wrenching, chest-heaving sobs. And then this novel came and it just made my heart feel so good, but it broke it at the same time. It was just, 
oh my god, the, the array of emotions that I felt during this book was astounding. I, so poor Casey at the beginning of this story is really, really having a rough time of it. If you guys remember in the first novel, she was heavily drinking when she was part of that band, Rapid Confession, and Jonah got her out of it. Jonah inspired her to get out of that situation. And now that Jonah's gone, she's just spiraling down. And even after her promise to Teddy to stay in Las Vegas, she just can't take it anymore. It's all becoming too much. She sees Jonah everywhere. She can't escape his spirit. So she just hauls off and picks up and goes down to New Orleans where she's known as the Drowned Girl. She's playing these local clubs. She was so desperate to find an outlet for her emotions that she just wrote an entire album on her life with Jonah and then her life after Jonah's death. She goes up on the stage, she does her thing, she gets off, and she just drinks. She's been constantly drunk for the better part of six months. Luckily for her, there's a bartender at one of the clubs she works at, Big E, who is very, very concerned about her. And he hears her rambling about some guy named Teddy one night, and he finally contacts Teddy at his tattoo shop and says, hey, if you know this girl, you need to come down now because she is in a terrible situation. The Theo is, of course, panicking. His entire family has not heard from Casey in six months. She just completely dropped off the face of the earth. So he picks up everything, goes to New Orleans, and what he sees is heartbreaking to him. Just this frail little shadow of a person that Casey once was. She's literally drowning herself in liquor. He decides to help her step up to the plate and get her sober. And in this process, he realized just how hard Jonah's death was on Casey and also himself. So Theo and Casey continue to communicate. And at first it's just to make sure that Casey is on track, that she's not falling back into drinking. And then it sort of stems out of commiseration. They both know how the other feels. They've lost the same person. Jonah, for Theo, was the only one who really kept his family together. He was the glue. Unfortunately, he is just the outcast of his family. His father is just so disapproving of what he's done. His mother, in a way has sort of lost her golden child. While she doesn't neglect Theo, Jonah was just this shining star of the family and he just lit up the entire room. And now that he's gone, everything is falling to pieces. And Theo's mother is so desperate to know how Casey is because through her, through Casey, she can almost see Jonah. It's almost like Jonah is still there living through Casey's love for him. So even in death, Jonah is almost still the glue that's holding this family together, and that lies within Casey. So it starts off as commiseration between what the both of them have gone through. It ends up turning into something more, but the problem with that is everything is basically working against them, including themselves. There's a racking guilt that they would feel as if they were trying to replace Jonah, as if what Jonah and Casey had meant nothing. And then it's their family, Jonah's friends, Theo's friends, what the hell are they going to think if Casey and Theo have a relationship? So there's a lot working against them. So this story is really about the mending of two souls. So in Full Tilt, Jonah taught Casey how to love. Casey was sleeping with guys on a nightly basis. She really didn't care. She didn't think love was possible for her. And then Jonah came to her and taught her how to be open for love, how to receive love and then love back. So she can either take what Jonah has given her in the ability to love and see that as the manifestation of his spirit living on, or she can try to wipe her slate clean and try to get over it. I think the big question on a lot of people's minds are gonna be, is Jonah replaced? Is he lost within this book? The answer is hell to the no. Jonah is very much present in this book, and I love Emma for that. She didn't try to make Jonah disappear. He's still there. He's never diminished. He, his spirit is so in this book. And while I think for many people that would be really confusing because you would think, well, does she love Jonah? Does she love Theo? But there's a line in the book where Casey says, my heart is not broken anymore. It's just forever altered. Jonah has forever altered it. Jonah is still living on through Casey and also through Theo. And to further expound upon that point, Theo is very different from Jonah, despite how close they were. Theo has a very hard exterior. It's very difficult to tell exactly what he's thinking and how he's feeling. And he's not only carrying his own guilt and his own sorrow with him, he's carrying everybody else's. He's trying to take care of his mother. He's trying to get his father's approval. He's trying to open his own tattoo shop. He's taking care of Casey. He puts everybody else's needs above his own. And when he realizes that the one thing he does need 
Casey is almost forbidden to him, that really becomes a main struggle in this novel. And God, do you feel for him. Oh my God. My heart broke for these two characters in so many ways. I personally do not think that Emma could have handled this any better. This is just the whole story coming full circle. And that's what I love the most about it. I can't say that I love this more than Full Tilt. I can't say that I love Full Tilt more than I love this. Because this is something that just needed to happen. This is the journey coming to a close. And I cannot imagine having the story be any other way. I can't imagine Casey being with anybody else. I can't imagine Theo being with anybody else. And it's amazing how perfect they are for one another. And I think especially in Full Tilt, Jonah was always telling Casey that she was a universe. And in this case, she's Theo's universe. And I really, really fell in love with Theo. And believe me, I almost sort of pushed against it because I feel so loyal to Jonah. I don't know. I, I almost felt like I was in the same situation as the characters where if I fell in love with Theo, I was betraying Jonah. And I'm sitting here just struggling to find the words to explain how much I love this story. I can't even say that it's specifically all in. It's the whole thing, which is a reason why this is not a standalone. You really do have to go read Full Tilt first. But I just, oh my God, this was brilliant. It was everything I could have ever wanted. I'm gonna have to make room up there so that Full Tilt and All In can be together. They're one story, so they need to be side by side and they need to be up on that shelf just so I can look at them, I can almost see and envision the story. Okay guys, so I'm going to cut the non-spoiler section here. I have been rambling on for almost a half an hour and it's gonna be a bitch editing this. I will have the purchase links for All In listed down in the description box below. It will be out on October 11th and I will see you guys in the spoiler section when you have read it. So I'm just sitting here looking at all of my notes and I have no idea where to start. This story is so fucking complex and I loved every single bit of it. So it's really hard for me to sit here and pick and choose what I want to talk about because I could just sit here and talk for like an hour and that's probably going to be really boring to you guys. But I'll talk about the one thing that I guess scared me in the book and that was the accidental pregnancy because my first thought was, oh no not an accidental pregnancy to bring the two characters together. Please don't let it be that. I don't want to see a baby at this and then have everything be okie dokie. I've seen it before. I was happy that it turned out the way it did because it steered it completely away from the cliche. And how fucking perfect, okay, gather myself for a minute. How perfect was it when Casey was in that hospital bed and she said, Jonah says she's safe. She's safe with him. Oh my God, I could not stop the tears at that point because it's Jonah, it's Jonah. He's welcoming the spirit of Theo and Casey's daughter. He's given his blessing to the union of Casey and Theo, even though they've already had it since his dying breath. But still, that part for me was just, oh. I did have a breakdown in this book one time, one big breakdown, and that was when Jonah's art installation was going to be moved and they broke some of the glass and Theo just broke himself. He was as fragile as that glass and just totally shattered because that art installation was Jonah. And to have some of that be broken and know that Jonah can't be there to fix it, he can never make another one, it was devastating. It was totally devastating. But that was the point in the novel when all of the emotions that I have been wanting to see from Theo just came out. Just his admission and all of his walls just breaking and crashing and crumbling down. That was it for me. Just the image in my head of all of that glass lying on the floor and knowing that the person who made it is never coming back and can't fix it, it just completely fucking broke my heart. The invisible blue butterfly that Jonah and Theo try to catch and having Casey put it there so that the brothers are just there. It's, it's not Theo or Jonah, it's both of them. It signifies both of them. And then the father finally coming through and I didn't know what was going to happen with the father. I thought the father was going to stay cold throughout the entire book and I was just going to go, well, yeah, right. But that whole bit where he gets Jonah and Theo's name and he finally welcomes his black sheep son back into his heart. This story could not have ended any more perfectly for me. It just couldn't have. It was everything that I wanted as 
a follow-up to Full Tilt. And believe me, I set the bar really high in my head. <laughs> I can't think about Full Tilt without thinking about All In now and vice versa, which I think is really how it should be. I think of this series and I see the whole story now and the whole story comes to a really beautiful ending where these poor broken souls are just united. I can't express my love for this book enough. I just can't. I can't do it. All right, guys, so that is it for me today. I have been rambling on for 45 minutes, so <laughs> I'm dreading editing this, I'm telling you. In any case, I really hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you are not already to see some more videos from me, and I will see you guys later. Bye.